first in five, a call for action against shootings from members of the greater Portland area black community. And the call is focused on politicians and fellow community members. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. Last month saw a record number of shootings in the greater Portland area. And while we were putting together this report, there were two more. One of them just an hour and a half ago. Pat Doris reports. Wednesday night in Gresham, two children, three and five years old, were hit by bullets as they played outside just before nine at night. The gunman got away. It's yet another in a seemingly endless string of shootings in the greater Portland area this summer. Many have been deadly. Fifteen people were murdered in Portland in the month of July, the most for one month in 30 years. This is my baby, Jordan Lee Lewis Kepler. July 28th, someone murdered the now grown son of Katie Lewis, gunned down in broad daylight in Portland. She joined black community leaders calling on parents, grandparents, and others to get involved to stop the gun violence. And to the mothers of the babies that killed my baby. <laughs> to the mothers of the babies that killed my baby. You know, because we all know. Some here criticize the gang code of not talking to police. Lucy Mache's son, Leonard James Irving Jr., died nine years ago. Her pain is still raw. My son ain't in no gang. What do you mean? My son is dead? What are you talking about? It was my son. She focused some of her feelings on the black community. Y'all better look at this. Where are we as parents? Are you going in the room and seeing what your kids got in their rooms? There was two people in the car with my son, Brian and Terrence. They won't even come forward and speak. How do you live with yourself? How do we live with ourselves as a community? Everybody in Portland know who killed my son. There were other calls for peace. I would like to make a plea to the streets to please stop. And less polite demands targeting government leaders. What is wrong is we have had a retreat. We have had an acquiescence. Kevin Modica retired from the Portland Police Bureau three years ago after three decades of service. There is no cost you can put on a human life, and I say to you, I demand of you, City of Portland, City of Portland Police Commissioner Ted Wheeler, City of Portland Commissioners, the elected legislators of Multnomah County and Gresham, we demand of you to do your work. Do your work. He did not call for a return of the defunded gun violence reduction team, but said the politicians must allow the police chief to use the tools he has to fight the gun violence. We demand that the chief be empowered. Empower your chief. Be empowered to utilize the available talent and expertise that is present in the Portland Police Bureau. Other speakers said the loss of that specialized gun reduction team meant the loss of historical knowledge and relationships in the black community, the sorts of things that held down the gun violence. The mayor today said he agreed that those things were important and that he's working with the police chief now to try and figure out how to put some aspects of that back in place. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. And tonight, Portland city leaders are speaking out against planned violent attacks on police precincts in Portland. Kristen Severance attended today's news conference where Mayor Ted Wheeler said, this isn't protesting, it's attempted murder. I don't believe that Portlanders want to see public buildings burned or city employees murdered. Mayor Ted Wheeler said a group of 200 to 300 people set out to attack the East Precinct with 20 officers inside early Thursday morning. The precinct is in Southeast Portland in a residential neighborhood and attached to condos. But last night, within the first seven minutes of this group showing up at the precinct, East Precinct, they had tore off the protective boards that cover the facility because of the condition that the city is in with people displaying violent acts towards the police and the facilities. They took the boards and they put them between the handles of the door to lock the people inside. They piled those boards up against the building and they used accelerants to light it on fire. Prior to doing that, they disabled all the security cameras and they shined green lasers in the lights of officers' eyes so we couldn't see what was going on. The last fatal fire I was on where I carried a young woman out of a house 
uh, with the help of my colleagues, um, it, it was caused by someone using fire as a weapon and and blocking an, an exit route. And so she was trapped and and literally burned alive. And these things are not okay. Police declared a riot and fired tear gas. All of the Portland city leaders said these violent acts are taking away from the real talks about police reform and accountability. This is not about a movement. It's not about black lives. It's not about racial uh, justice. It's not about police reform. It's uh, planned, um, coordinated attacks on police officers. And I feel that lives hang in the balance. I am 100% for the movement. I'm 100% for making things better for for us as minorities um, and, and making this city a better place. But this is not the way to get there. And hurting people and trying to, to trap people in buildings and burn them up is, it, it's, it's just completely awful. Mayor Wheeler said they are expecting other planned attacks on occupied city buildings in Portland this week and weekend. He said they will make arrests and hold people accountable. I'm Kristen Severance, KGW News. Night after night, for over two months, Portland police have been on the receiving end of sometimes violent protesters. Today, officers shared their perspectives on protests, how it's impacting their jobs, and the call to defund police. Here's Devin Haskins. Three Portland police officers with varying years of service shared their experiences as members of the Portland Police Bureau today. Sergeant Maxey, thank you so much for being here today. The questions they were asked were first from a fellow officer. Sergeant Brett Maxey, an 18-year veteran, says the protests have taken away response times from other calls. The amount of resources available to actually deal with the calls is extremely limited. And I have seen calls throughout the last couple months that have held for, you know, a day uh, because there's just nobody to go. Officers have been taken off the streets to handle the nightly protests, starting peacefully, then turning violent. Objects have been thrown, as well as words that no one should have to hear. There was one individual who said that he was going to take the baton from one of the female officers and, and uh, sexually abuse her with it. It was, um, I mean, again, something that is, is so, so vile, nobody should be exposed to that. Protests have brought changes to the police bureau. Mayor Ted Wheeler and city council cut both the youth services division and the gun violence reduction team. Officer Rihanna Carriage was on that team, a job now patrol officers handle. When I found out the unit was getting cut, I mean, I was devastated. It was so hard on me emotionally because I have friendships there. I, we are all so close working in that unit. Sergeant Derek Foxworth says cutting these teams does a disservice to officers trying to forge relationships. Our youth services division was one of the best ways that we interacted with young people in non-crisis situations. He goes on to say this is about funding. You take away the funding, you have officers without the right experience. The conversation right now between around defunding and abolishing the police do not equate to those goals I think the community is really asking for of a well-trained, efficient officer to respond. In Portland, Devin Haskins, KGW News. We've been following the protests in Portland since the beginning. To see all of our coverage, head to the KGW YouTube page. We've created a special playlist there. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. Today, the Oregon Health Authority reported 267 new cases. Those new cases are reflected on a graph we're going to show you here. There have now been more than 20,200 infections in the state. One new death was also reported today, bringing that total to 339.